OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. All right, welcome everyone. I'm Nate Sachdeva and I'm with Nicole Lincoln. We are San Diego Adult School. Uh, we are with a part of San Diego Unified School District, which um, services over 100,000 students in grades TK through 12. We're very excited to be here today. Um, thank you for um, the great turnout and having the extra guests in as well. Um, so here's a picture of each of us um, dressed up, looking nice. Normally we don't wear <laughs> wearing ties and suits and everything in San Diego, um, but for picture day, it's always worth it. Um, so San Diego Adult School, we offer a high school diploma program that is really for the student that um, we're targeting our students that were not successful in our comprehensive high schools. And so we know that the traditional classroom experience might not fit um, their um, learning styles or what their schedule is looking like or what's going on in their lives. So we really try to cater to the individual student. So we offer an online educational experience. Um, we do offer accelerated opportunities. Students truly learn and progress at their own pace. Um, so students can really um, buckle down if they have the time in their schedule to um, get their diploma rather quickly compared to some of our other programs. But it also offers flexibility in terms of the student that has, is working or might have um, family obligations outside of school um, to go at their own pace and be able to work when it is best for them. Um, we have an opportunity to have offer two types of diplomas, both the option one and the option two. Um, currently, we have 400 students that are benefiting from our services, as well as the high school diploma program and our aid program. Um, students receive free college and career transition support as well from our partners at San Diego Workforce Partnership. Um, I work out of the Office of College Career Technical Education, and so it's really a goal for us to make sure that our students are not only in our um, program to get their high school diploma, but also to prepare them for the career um, that they're going to be passionate about. So we don't want them to come to our program just for a high school diploma, and we don't want them to get a high school diploma to just to get a job. We really want it to be a fit for them and something that they're excited about. Um, and in order to do that, we also require the students to take a community college course um, with our partners at the community college or San Diego Continuing Education. Um, and that really gives them the opportunity to take a college course with teacher support and walk away knowing that, hey, I earned my high school diploma. And if I choose to go to college, I know I can do it. I've already taken one class, I've been successful, and I got one foot in the door and now I'm ready for that next step. We consist of six school sites um, across the district. We have um, sites at Crawford High School, Garfield High School, Lincoln High School, Madison High School, Mira Mesa High School and Morse High School. Um, this allows us to bring students in from all over the district. San Diego is quite a large city and sometimes um, commuting for that in-person support is not ideal if you're living at one end of the city. So this way students can really access no matter where they live. Um, when the instructors are there um, Monday through Friday during the traditional school hours, um, they offer the tutoring services, they can um, guidance, and they also offer one-on-one -on -one support when needed. Um, and we've really found that that um, helps a lot in terms of building that relationship between the student and the teacher. Um, many of our students that come to our program um, were not successful in our comprehensive sites. And one of the reasons for that is because they didn't feel a part of the community, a part of the school, or have those deep relationships, or feel like somebody on the campus truly cared about them or knew them as a person. In order to do that, we really wanna make sure that our teachers and students have the opportunity to interact and really kind of build that relationship. Um, at our Mir Mesa High School um, Diploma Program, we also offer the Abe Classroom, and that offers for adult basic education as well as English language su skill support. We have a wonderful retired teacher who um, has years and years of um, English language su skill support, and she does a phenomenal job of making sure our students um, build up those skills in order to access our content. Um, we really look at the students that are 18 and 19 years old that weren't successful in our program or our comprehensive sites. And then our partners at the continuing ed um, offer the 20 and over. And then we both flip flop um, students with unique um, situations. So if we have an 18 or 19 year old who really needs that structured environment of in class, specific hours, et cetera, then we will always um, grant them a waiver so that they can enroll in their program. And in addition to that, if we have somebody who is 22 years old, um, but really needs as working or has a family at home and can't do the seed time, then they are welcome into our program. So it's worked out very nicely that way. 
Um, and really, we want to make sure that our students um, can access our curriculum um, at their at their times. So we really want to, we've learned through the pandemic that many of our students that have been successful weren't actually completing their coursework um, from 8 a.m. to 3, uh, 3 p.m. It was oftentimes after they got home from work or after they got the kids to bed or on the weekends, and that's when they had time. And having the online opportunities really opened the door for all those students. This is our team. So in order uh, to reach the needs of all of these students, um, we have our six um, high school diploma teachers, as well as Carol Wise, who is our aid instructor. And we also have Kersley Tate, who is our school counselor. Um, and Kersley follows, uh, she handles a lot of the enrollment, the um, transcript verification, and as well as setting up um, ways to kind of be that first face um, when entering the program and launching our orientation. Now, the DLAC uh, 101 really aligned perfectly for us. I began with San Diego Adult Schools in uh, February of 2020. So this is a brand new experience to me. And um, obviously the pandemic hitting um, threw a lot of things up in the air as to what we were doing. Luckily, we had transitioned from a packet-based program to the online platform approximately two years ago. And so once the pandemic hit, um, we were already ahead of the game in terms of having an idea of, of you know, students could access our program um, which was really huge for us because we didn't have to go back and learn or try to um, take on a new approach for things, but we did need to make sure that we could get devices out to students um, in a timely fashion. And with the benefits of our program, the students um, have their, we've learned through the readings that we've gone through with DLAC, uh, the assignments and the activities, um, and really appreciate all of the virtual professional development. Um, all of the items and activities that we've done throughout the program have really aligned with the work that we already were doing, and it really gave us an opportunity to create a template um, and a plan and get really all of our ideas on paper and focused and targeted, um, which was really needed during these crazy times. You know, everybody had more on their plate this year, and having kind of that that guided approach um, really benefited us as a team and as well as me as a new administrator to the team to make sure that I was um, keeping uh, focused on our vision um, and making sure we were hitting the checkpoints along the way. Um, as we transitioned to this school year, um, we really um, found out, like I said, that the transitioning to the online learning environment benefited a lot of our students, but it doesn't work for every student. And so we also have been able to reopen our school sites across San Diego Unified um, on April 12th. So we're now offering our in-person support as needed at our learning centers. And we're going to continue this model into the fall and future years as well. So if a student is showing us that they are successful um, after hours and on the weekends, they can, they're still welcome to come to our learning centers, but we are not going to require them to come in as long as they're doing well. Um, but we always um, want to make sure that we offer those supports to the students who need them. Um, and this is so far has turned out to be a really nice balance um, of opportunities for the students. Um, we really learned a lot about the students themselves through this program. Um, as we got to know them um, more as people and the different things that they're going through. And we know that the things that we kind of offered in the past um, that we want, we thought, you know, offering, you know, we need to make sure that the students are in for four hours a week and they're doing all these check-ins. Um, but then we also learned that there's also a group of students that are able to do things independently. Um, and we want to make sure that we're offering that as well. Um, so we're learning that more students have been more successful. Um, we're also giving the opportunity to work around their schedule and really meet the needs of that individual student. So skills learned through DLAG virtual training session. So team building, we placed a lot of emphasis on collaboration and shared commitment. Um, our members were able to share the information freely, which helped increase productivity of our planning and implementation. Our team was really receptive to what we were trying to do. So we were appreciative of that. Um, setting a culture for change and learning. Uh, through our biweekly meetings, we were able to collaborate and uh, use constructive problem solving to improve any ongoing adjustments that we needed to make during this process. Um, and it was just based on evidence um, what, with what was working with our students and what might not have been working. Um, handling conflict, that we may have had some disagreements here and there, but we were able to work through it along with um, several of the lessons that we learned through um, the virtual training sessions, you know, mutual respect for one another. Um, it's okay to disagree. So um, at the end, we were able to walk away from our discussions with the team and understand that nothing was personal and that we were here to accomplish 
the goal, which was ultimately making sure students were successful in our program. Next slide, please. Um, continuing with the skills, let's, I need to go back one more. Yes. Continuing with the skills that we learned during the um, virtual training, communication skills were important. You know, we wanted to make sure that we were active listen, actively listening to the ideas and input from our team members when in regards to anything that um, was being discussed, you know, an open and free exchange of ideas without fear of ridicule which didn't seem to be um, too much of a problem for our group. We have a very outspoken team group. Um, so that worked out well. And then, you know, there was a belief that all the ideas contributed to the goal of the group. So we were able to gather a lot of ideas from our group as we went through this process about what worked because a lot of our teachers, you know, have been in adult ed for um, more years than myself. So, Moving forward, we use, and, and this part I speak to my specifically Nate and myself, I think we worked well as a team as we took the ideas from the group and put together um, this plan. Um, while there's little overlap in our theme, little to no overlap in our theme of, in our, of our strengths, it's probably a, a strong reason why we work well on this project. We were able to rely on one another and, um, uh, focus of Nate's that uh, or strength of Nate's that was strong might have been not as strong in me, but it ended up working well that we were able to put come together and put this together. Next, okay. So what challenges and barriers did we encounter? Um, as mentioned before, securing devices and internet access for our students. Um, this was magnified during COVID-19 um, and we were able to um, work through this with the support of the district getting um, Chromebooks as well as um, we're, I have to read this one more time. Okay. Um, we were able to receive district support. Okay, so the changes that have been made is that we're gonna purchase more Chromebooks in order for our students to have access to the technology in order to uh, to access the curriculum. Next slide. Next steps. We're utilizing the support from OTAN to redesign our recruit, recruitment strategies, our orientation process, and our enrollment procedures. And we're looking forward to putting these ideas into practice in the fall of 2021. Um, we're also looking to incorporate some sort of strength inventory, similar to the Gallup strength, the Gallup Clifton strengths exercise that we um, were able to take during the DLAC 101 course. And then we feel like incorporating an assessment of this type will allow us to understand the type of students that we're working with and basically um, uh, maybe guide them into, you know, their next future steps if that is college or career and, you know, just kind of understanding the student more. So support, help, and other. So it's what support do we need as a team? So our team is really looking for feedback and advice um, regarding the implementation of the strength inventory. If any group out there has had an opportunity to um, provide or provide their students with something like this, we we definitely be open to hearing about that. Um, assistance from the DLAC staff, the availability, their support, expertise is appreciated as we continue to navigate through this process. Um, and other areas of importance, just any type of strategies, groups out there that may have to continue to keep our student population engaged and focus on their quest for a diploma and their eventual movement into career. So in summary, um, DLAC has uniquely situated, has uniquely situated, is, <laughs> is uniquely situated to meet the needs of our program as it focuses on the online experience. 
uh, we found that we, we were kind of ahead of the game um, when COVID hit because we were actively moving toward uh, moving our curriculum to tech, you know, being on online. Um, we've also learned that we need to meet students where they are as opposed to where we are. It's important to student success. Um, and we realized that through the flexibility of our programs, students logging in at midnight, 5 a.m. is definitely idea for the busy lives they lead. Um, we've also recognized our supply of technology can be a challenge. And so we're gonna work on that as well as when technology becomes antiquated or damaged and replacement of that. And we're looking to, we're redesigning our curriculum. I mean, redesigning our recruitment strategies, orientation process and enrollment procedures for the new school year. And we just wanna to continue to create an experience that's unique to our students and that is rewarding to our students. And lastly, we want our students to be excited about their next steps after earning their diploma and their future career goals. And that concludes the presentation.